Olive was standing in a big science laboratory, surrounded by test tubes filled with colourful bubbling liquids. She wore a white lab coat and a big pair of safety goggles. Suddenly, she heard a voice. Ah, no, 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 no. What is the answer to this problem? Olive turned around and saw a small man in a lab coat. He was muttering to himself and staring into a microscope. Hello, I'm Olive. Ouch, you startled me. I am Professor Comover, but you can call me Hair Comover. I am a very busy scientist. What can I do for you? I was going to ask you the same thing. Are you in a spot of bother? I've been trying to invent a cure for baldness for many years. It's driving me mad. The professor turned and picked up two bottles from the table. I need to mix together the right ingredients for the cure. If I do, I will have beautiful flowing hair again. Oh, how I miss my hair. Look, this is me when I was younger. Handsome, eh? I just can't find the right ingredients. I don't know much about ingredients for your cure, I'm afraid. Then Olive spotted something in the corner of the lab. Hmm, a mop? I think I may have an idea. Close your eyes, hair comb over. Professor comb over closed his eyes. Olive pulled the handle off the mop and stuck it on top of the professor's head. You can open your eyes now. The professor looked in a mirror. I, I look like my great aunt Brunhilde. He shrieked. I don't want this. I want to grow my own. All right, keep your hair on. <sighs> look, if you really want to help, uh, I need you to get that big blue book down from the shelf. Well, this book can't have been open in a very long time. It's covered in dust. Olive opened the book and dust flew up everywhere. And Olive couldn't help sneezing. Achoo! The sneeze made her fall backwards into a shelf filled with hundreds of bottles. One of them toppled over and poured orange liquid into a beaker of purple liquid on the table. No, wait, that's not good. Cried the professor. All of a sudden there was a huge... Bang! I don't believe it. It's a miracle. You did it, Olive. You found the cure for baldness. You are a scientific genius. <laughs> Professor Comover was so excited, he danced about all over the place. Thanks very much. Beamed Olive. It was then she caught her own reflection in the mirror. <laughs> Well, I like it, but this huge hairdo could take some getting used to. Hey, would you like me to style yours a bit? Why not? Replied the professor. Using a comb and a pair of scissors, Olive went to work styling the professor's new hairdo. What do you think? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Thank you very much. Well, it looks like you won't be needing to read this dusty old science book anymore. Oh no, I'm going to... Jump! I've lost all me hair. Oh, well. Hair today, gone tomorrow, eh? <laughs> they both laughed. And as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive, daydreaming again. Said her mum. Okay. Actually, I've been helping kill boldness. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. <laughs> Olive was standing in a big room, surrounded by huge skeletons. A cake. These are very impressive. Olive saw a little old man dusting one of the skeletons. Hello, I'm Olive. Oh, hello. My name's Terry Dactyl. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. What is this amazing place, Terry? Well, Olive, this is a museum, and these are dinosaur skeletons. Dinosaurs used to roam our planet millions of years ago. Where? That's a long time. Oh, yes, and it's my job to keep these spotless. I could really use some help tonight dusting them. I'd love to help you, Terry. Thanks, Olive. We have to be very careful, though. They're extremely delicate. So Olive and Terry got to work dusting the bones. But all of a sudden, Olive spotted a shadow moving. It looked like one of the dinosaur skeletons. 
Hey, the skeleton's alive! Olive turned and ran away, but she wasn't looking where she was going. Olive, watch out! Cried Terry, too late! Yeah! Olive ran straight into another skeleton and all the bones collapsed. <laughs> Those bones tumbled into the next skeleton and it fell over too. Then the next and the next until every skeleton had tumbled into a huge pile of bones on the floor. Oops, sorry, said Olive. Olive, what have you done? The museum opens soon and everybody will want to see the dinosaurs. Sorry, I saw a dinosaur move over there and it scared me. Standing next to the pile of bones stood a rather sheepish looking boy wearing a dinosaur mask. Oh, that's my son. Jerry Dactyl, what have I told you about creeping up on people wearing that mask? I'm sorry, Olive. No wonder you were scared. I'm sorry too, said Jerry. That's okay, Jerry. But how am I ever going to put all these skeletons back together? It's impossible. Would you like to see my dinosaur drawings, Olive? Look, I've done every single skeleton in the museum. These are really good. Drawings? Piles of bones? I think I may have an idea. Jerry, we can use your pictures to help us rebuild all the skeletons. I'm sure we'll be finished before the museum opens. Great idea, Olive. Let's do it. So they got started. <laughs> but it was like a huge puzzle. It really wasn't easy to work out where the bones were meant to go. Something's not quite right, said Olive. Too late. The museum has just opened. Here comes the first tour group. And here on your right is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And uh, uh, as you can see, it has absolutely huge wings. Oh! And over here is the Brontosaurus with its uh, uh, two tails. Ah! Uh, that's enough of the dinosaurs. Let's move on, shall we? Phew, I think we got away with it, Olive. I think we've created some brand new dinosaurs, like the Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> <laughs> they all laughed, and as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive, daydreaming again, said her mum. OK, actually, I've been rebuilding dinosaur skeletons. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. <laughs> Olive found herself in a room with shelves and worktops piled high with mounds Ooh. of dust. She was wearing an apron decorated with pictures of violins, cellos and bassoons. OK. This place could do with a spot of dusting. Just then, two smiling woodworms <laughs> popped their head out of a dust pile. Oh, hello, said Olive. The woodworms vanished before popping up from another dust pile. <laughs> My, you're both quick on your feet. <laughs> I mean, tummies. Before either worm had a chance to reply, whoosh! A large net fell over them, sending clouds of dust up into the air. The dust made Olive cough. <coughs> Did I get them? Yeah? No? Ah! Missed them again! As the dust cleared, she found herself face to face with a tall wolf wearing an apron just like hers. Hello. I am Wolfgang Amadeus Wozart, instrument maker to the king. This is my workshop. I'm Olive. Nice to meet you, Wolfgang. But, um, I don't see any instruments. This was a cello. This was a violin. And this was a bassoon to be played at the King's birthday concert tonight. Oh, I don't think you'll get much sound out of those instruments. This I know. It's those woodworm. As soon as I make any <laughs> instrument from wood, they eat it. <laughs> see? If I don't make the bassoon for the King's birthday concert tonight, he will be very upset. You must help me, Olive. Olive thought hard. Well, if the woodworm, oh, <laughs> I mean woodworm, only like to eat wood, maybe you could make a bassoon out of something else. But what? Olive looked around at things in the workshop. Hmm. A vacuum cleaner, a bicycle pump, 
I think I may have an idea. With Wolfgang's help, Olive used the vacuum cleaner's bendy pipe to form the body of the bassoon. Then they used the top of the bicycle pump as its mouthpiece. Finished! Now to see how it sounds, yeah? Wolfgang placed his lips to the bicycle pump mouthpiece and blow. Is that how a bassoon is supposed to sound, Wolfgang? Wolfgang stopped playing and shook his head. No, that sounded terrible. Just then, Olive remembered how the woodworm had reacted to the sound. Hmm. Those greedy woodworm didn't like the noise the bassoon made either. Wolfgang, you start to make your new wooden bassoon for the King's birthday concert. I think I know how I can keep those woodworm away. Olive blew into the bassoon as she marched up and down. The woodworm couldn't stand the noise and soon they wiggled away. And at last, Wolfgang finished making what would be his finest wooden bassoon. Ah, perfect. Thank you, Olive. Without your help, the concert would have been a disaster. Would you like to come as my guest? Um, I think I've heard enough bassoons for one day, thank you. <laughs> they both laughed, and as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Typical Olive, daydreaming again, said her mum. Okay. Actually, I helped make a bassoon for a king. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. Olive was inside a huge building. In the middle was a large machine with conveyor belts leading in all directions. Olive was wearing some green overalls and a yellow hard hat. Two men were working on the machine with spanners and screwdrivers. Oh, what is wrong with this silly machine? Complained one of the men. Hello, I'm Olive. What's going on? What ho, Olive? I'm Charles, foreman of this recycling plant. This is a recycling machine. Usually runs frightfully well, except at the moment it's not working at all. What does a recycling machine do? It sorts all the recyclable rubbish from the local area into paper, plastic, metal and glass. But it's broken down and we still have that huge pile of recycling to sort. <sighs> Problem is, we just can't work out what's wrong. Well, maybe I could take a look. Be my guest, old bean, said Charles, handing Olive a big spanner. She looked up at the machine's huge control panel, which had lots Ooh. of dials, switches and buttons. So, what could be the problem? Olive wasn't sure where to start, so she took the spanner and twisted one of the bolts. <laughs> Suddenly, lots of lights switched on and the machine made an odd noise. Oh! What? Who's there? Asked Olive. That really hurt. Complained a voice. Now all the lights were on, Olive could see that the control panel was actually a huge face. Oh, hello there. I'm Olive. I'm Recy, the recycling machine. It said. Charles and the other men looked amazed. I say, we never knew that machine could talk. Learn something every day, don't you? Said Resai. Resai, what's wrong? Why have you stopped sorting the recycling? I'm sad because the lovely music has stopped. I only like to work along to music, especially something with a good beat. Ah, that'll be our radio. Some careless chap dropped it on the floor yesterday and we haven't got ourselves a new one yet. Olive looked over at the big pile of recycling. There were lots of objects in the pile. Hmm. Some old metal bin lids, some bottles, some pieces of wood. I think I may have an idea. Olive grabbed the bin lids, bottles and wood from the pile and handed them to Charles and the other workers. She selected a bottle and an old metal spoon. Olive started a beat on the bottle. Resign! Resign! Charles and the other workers looked Resign. a bit confused but started to join Resign. in. Together now! Resign! Resign! Some of the workers Resign. made a beat using different Resign. pieces of recycling. Resign. Others hit the floor, the walls, and Resign. even the sides of Resai. Oh, wow! I love it! cried Resai. Suddenly, the conveyor belt started moving as Resai's pistons and cogs began Resign. to tear. Resai's working! 
working. Certainly is. Excellent stuff. Charles and the other workmen, while still drumming along to the beat, began to feed the recycling into Recycle. And soon he was happily sorting it all out. This is smashing stuff, Olive. Now we know how to keep Recy here a happy machine. Yes, at least until you get round to buying a new radio. They all <laughs> laughed. And as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Typical Olive, daydreaming again, said her mum. But Gek, actually, I was cheering up an unhappy recycling machine. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. <laughs> <laughs>